right here is a Florida stone crab, and you do not want to get pinched by that guy. Stone crabs are one of Florida's most expensive seafoods, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to catch them, how to cook them, how to eat them, and a ton of stone crab facts for you. Let's jump right in the water and show you how to catch a stone crab. There'll be several clips, so I'll walk you through what I'm doing here. I'm in the water diving. You can catch stone crabs in a trap, but that's not what we're doing. We're grabbing them. We're looking for them. They can be in any kind of holes in the bottom that they make, or they can be in rocks, or in this case, a cinder block, or any kind of structure. And then you got to measure the claw. Stone crabs are only kept for their claws. You cannot keep the body of the stone crab. And the way we do it is you take a knife, you stick it in the joint right there, and just give it a little wiggle outwards, and the crab will detach the claw from its body. That's better than just yanking it, because if you rip it the wrong way, the crab can bleed out and most likely die. Now, you can take both claws. There have been rules changes over the years. In this case, we only took one claw because that was the only claw big enough. But if both claws are of legal size, you can take both. Now you'll see throughout the video, I do this scooping thing where I'm kind of throwing the crab up in the air. These are crabs that belong on the bottom. They do not like being up in the up in the water column. So when I do that, their claws come out and it gives me a chance to grab them. And then once I'm able to get a hand on the crab, get one claw on each hand, I feel a lot safer because like I said, you do not want to get pinched by these guys, which which I've done. It's, it's not fun. We'll go over more of the, the facts on how hard they can actually pinch in a little while. I'll show you again here how we remove the claw. I stick my dive knife, that's my sword dive knife, into that joint. I actually let his other claw pinch onto the knife so it couldn't get me. And then with a little bit of outwards force, it detached that claw. So I know that crab broke that claw off in the right spot, which means it will survive or has a much better chance of surviving. And it will regenerate that claw. Uh, according to FWC, it says about a year. I've heard from other people, it takes about two years to reach mature size. Now this crab, only had one claw and it was the big claw. Uh, usually the claws are different sizes. They have the crushing claw and the pincer claw. The crushing claw does just what you think. It crushes and the pincer claw holds on to whatever it's crushing, holds on to its prey. That crab lost its claw somehow, whether it was from a predator or got wedged into a tight space and needed to break it off, but that's what they do. Uh, you can see they come out, they're pretty fired up, but with that motion of getting them higher in the water column, somehow I didn't get pinched by that one. Uh, makes it a little easier to get a grab on them. This area had a couple cinder blocks around. I never dove here before, but stumbled upon uh, an area where it looks like a storm or someone put some cinder blocks in the water and the stone crabs were liking it. We're just finding them in ledges, we're finding them in the cinder blocks and even holes in the bottom that they make themselves. But right there, throw them up in the water, do the little stone crab dance with your hands so you don't get pinched and keep moving on. Now, we're gonna do this over and over until we get enough crabs for dinner. And we're going to go over some stone crab facts for you. The Florida stone crab can be found on the East Coast from Connecticut all the way down through Florida. It's also found in the Gulf Coast and also found in Belize, Mexico, Jamaica, Bahamas, Cuba, and other places throughout the Caribbean. Uh, you can recognize them from their color. They have a brownish red color with tan spots and they have unequally sized claws. Uh, like we said earlier, one claw is the big crusher claw, the other claw is the pincer claw, and they have black tips on those claws. Uh, the females usually have a bigger body, while the males usually have bigger claws. Uh, they feed on oysters, small mollusks, and other crustaceans, and will even eat seagrass and anything it can really scavenge on the bottom like many other crabs. Uh, predators include fish like grouper, cobia, drum, and sea turtles, octopus, and pretty much anything that you would expect to eat a crab throughout the ocean will eat a stone crab if it can handle battling those big old claws. Uh, claw strength. Now this is something that's really interesting. The claw strength is absolutely ridiculous at 19,000 pounds per square inch, which is four times the force of a crocodile bite. A pinch from these crabs can easily crush your finger or leave it just broken or badly bruised. If you get pinched, which I've gotten pinched this particular day, I, I was getting risky and I got pinched like five times. Um, only two of those times is pretty bad, and one left a bruised fingernail, which was, it got me good. But I have pretty heavy-duty gloves on, and it still can get you really good. But if you do get pinched, don't pull your finger away. 
as you pull away, they tighten up more and more. Um, go go kind of limp on it, and they usually let go. Or if you're in the position where you can get a knife in that joint, it'll pop the claw off, and once the claw pops off, the claw does open up. But I would say just leave it loose, because if you get pinched, it's probably in a hole still, because that's where I usually get pinched. Uh, the stone crab claws, the sizes has changed over the years, but now they need to be 2 and 7 eighth inch. Now, you, that's not the entire claw, that's just that end piece. You've seen me measure several of them in the video, so that's the size the claw needs to be. Uh, the female crabs reach maturity in about two years, and then they can reproduce. Spawning in the spring and summer, which is when stone crab season is closed. And they can produce up to a million eggs per spawn. Now, the lifespan for a stone crab is seven to eight years. Um, if a stone crab loses its leg or arm, they can grow back. Uh, but if it's broken in the wrong spot like we went over before, it will most likely bleed out and not survive. Um, like all other crabs, they molt. And lobsters and all other sorts of uh, crustaceans, they molt. Uh, the, as the crab grows, it becomes too big for its shell, and it kind of backs out of its shell, and now it's soft and vulnerable. It doesn't have a hard shell protecting it. In this time, they're very, very vulnerable, so they usually hide until their shell hardens up, and then they can go battle nature again. They almost always molt at night, but if they feel the need to molt during the day, they can release a hormone from a gland under their eye, which prevents the crab from molting until it gets to a safe dark space, or it's nighttime. Let's talk about the price, because they are some of the most expensive seafood that you can find in Florida. The stone crab are graded. The claws, depending on the size, depends on the price. Mediums are going to be the smallest, then large, jumbo, and colossal. The size for the claws are about 2.5 to 3 ounces, 3 ounces to 5 ounces, 5 ounces to 7 ounces, and 7 ounces to 9 ounces for the Colossals. Now price. Now this is the market price. This is not a restaurant price. So keep that in mind. If you were to order it at a restaurant, it would be a whole lot more than this. The price for mediums is usually around $35 per pound. Large at $47, Jumbo at $65, and Colossal at $72 per pound for stone crab claws. Now we're going to go ahead and cook them up. First thing you're going to want to do is get some water boiling in a pot bigger than the one I have. I couldn't find the big pot until I was all done, but then I found it. But basically, bring the water to a boil, then add your claws. Uh, that's really too many claws for that amount of water, but you'll get the picture. It worked out anyways. Uh, once you add the claws, the water won't be boiling anymore. You won't have that like vigorous boil, so the claws will start changing color almost immediately. And then once the water starts boiling again, that's your timer starting. So seven minutes from there, take them out, rinse them off in some cool water. Some people prefer an ice slush, some people do it different ways. I just rinsed them off with some cool water, put them in the fridge, shut it, and then let them cool off. Then it was time to enjoy some stone crab. We ended up going out the next day too. We had about 60 claws in total, and this is the way I crack them open. Uh, using the back of a butter knife, everyone has a butter knife hit them right there on both sides and you get that nice little bite that's like the king bite right there that's the really good piece that's and the stuff right there you can also pick it out of the knuckles you can pick it out of the claw whatever doesn't come out with that first bite and it is some good stuff there's some stone crab in 101 for you now i skipped through the eating part we're going to come back and talk about that now we had a ton of stone crab there was like eight of us over at ryan's house big shout out hook and reel charters for hosting the stone crab and snook feast and that was more like personal time I wasn't looking to make a big video ordeal of it but we're gonna talk about it now so obviously the butter knife works I showed you that you can also use the back of a spoon uh, but we didn't talk about the knuckles and I didn't talk about any other tools that could be used now the butter knife works great if you're looking to use something you already have if you want to go into all the different tools available check out toadfish I linked up with toadfish earlier this year and got pretty much everything needed to take care of my Bahama trips and that's what we're going to talk about now. First up is the crab mallet. The crab mallet's coolest feature, I think, is it has a pick at the bottom. So it's one tool, everything you need for stone crab. You can use the mallet, but make sure when you're using a mallet, you get your pressure kind of under control. If you're hitting it too hard, you're just going to be crushing shells into your crab meat. and You won't get that big satisfying pull out there like you saw Mike do right there. Um, 
the mallet works great. Just got to kind of play with it, figure out the right pressure to use to crack the shell. Uh, next up is the knuckles. You can use the butter knife, you can use the mallet, you can do that on the knuckles just like you would on the big part of the claw. But what I like to use for a little bit more of a controlled break, you could call it, is this super heavy duty lobster and crab shear sort of thing. I don't remember what it's called, but we'll have links in the description to absolutely everything. Um, very well made, feels good in the hand, nice and heavy, I like it a lot. Um, and then we have the pick tool. The pick tool, you can use what's on the back of the hammer, but if you wanna have picks for everyone, they come in, I think, a four pack. But if I'm showing you this, I gotta show you what brought me to Toadfish, and it was these things. A tumbler, looks like a normal tumbler, but none of my other tumblers look like that on the bottom. And what it is, you set it down. I didn't push it down at all. It's like a suction cup sort of thing, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I'm rocking this whole stand here. It does not come off, but then to pick it up, you just lift it right up, pull it straight up. Cool little thing to add on your boat so your drink doesn't spill. Now you should be covered for the Stone Crab in 101, and I will leave you guys with a thank you for watching the videos. Subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, do all that stuff. It helps me out big time. And last shout out is Janto Gear, my hats. I got a Stone Crab design, I got a new Stone Crab claw design, and I also have a full crab design, but the crab design isn't on my website because I haven't put it up there yet. But check it out, jantogear.com. Any of the sticker designs are available on the hats. Custom made by yours truly. Thanks a lot, and we will see you in the next video. Oh, that's it.